is Wednesday, new week, and we are back to touring houses in Wildstar. Um, we were gone last week because uh, we had to take um, son to the airport. He's on vacation in the U.S. Uh, for a few weeks, so um, we had to make a like a red eye trip um, to the airport because you have to be there so many hours in advance. Blah blah blah. Um, let's just suffice to say the rest of that day I was like a zombie so I knew in advance that um, I wouldn't be able to handle streaming that day so unfortunately we had to cancel. But we are back and um, looking forward to doing um, some tours for you today. Um, if you hear some uh, kitty chatter, um, they're a little bit vocal this morning. I don't know if it's the noise from the neighbor's house where they're doing some construction work, a lot of sign and I don't know, hammers knocking and stuff. So I don't know if that's disturbing them a little, but if you hear some meowing and stuff, that's that's what it is. Um, also, there may be a, a little hum. There's a fan on. It's already kind of warm up here. It's like um, humidity so high, it feels like a sauna. So I have some uh, fan going on for some air circulation. I did have the window open, but it was too loud because the farmer across the street has a lot of stuff going on over there. So it's just a, a hustle bustle this morning. Um, but uh, before we get started, um, let me go with uh, a few reminders um, of things going on for this month. Um, first of all, today is of course maintenance day. Um, I think they said it was a, a 15 minute long thing. Um, so, uh, it's a short one, uh, shouldn't be too much trouble for those that, uh, don't want to have their game time interrupted for too long. Uh, there's also, um, for this month, uh, we've got the Boss Hunter Challenge. It's coming up on July 6th through the 9th. Um, that's the one where you can get the, uh, Dancing Moody NPC, I think. Um, along with a bunch of other stuff like uh, 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 clothing dyes and uh, a pet and some uh, costume pieces and stuff like that. So if you've been looking for the Moody Dancer thingy, um, I believe that event will be something you'll be wanting to get into so that you can have yourself one of those. Um, also, there is the residential renovation. It is a monthly thing, and this month it is going to land on the... 20th through the 27th of July um, and it I think it's the battle chase version that's the one that has the uh, weapons crates and the tanks and a couple other things it's, you know Dominion version and exile version um, they'll also be those those builder um, uh, packs will also be available in the cash shop um, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works exactly. As if you can earn, and maybe it's for those that can't earn enough to buy as many as they would like, or something, um, with the event currency kind of thing. But anyway, uh, so yeah, if you're looking for some more of those materials, um, that is something to look out for as well. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. No, that's all I got on my list. So. Uh, just a heads up for those events, um, for, for those of you that uh, have a specific theme going around and, and want to use those items. Um, my stomach is growling really loud. <clears throat> um, if you're wondering why we're at this particular plot, it doesn't look like a whole much, I know, but um, there was uh, a, an individual that um, asked me on Twitter about um, if we had done videos in the past of the black hole house. Now, in fact, we have visited a few plots with that as their um, prefab house. Uh, but generally speaking, and from what I can recall, most of them had like uh, modified it to the point where you really didn't see what it looked like originally. It, they just changed it so much. So I decided to uh, do a bit of research and find some places that have the house so that those that are interested in buying it, um, uh, I think it's part of um, the summer sale, I think is what I understood. Um, this will give you an opportunity to kind of see what it looks like 
kind of almost straight from purchase and um, give you a better understanding how the, the house works. It's a really weird kind of thing. I, I personally didn't feel interested in getting it, but there were several builders that had some really amazing ideas on how to, to utilize the, the quirkiness of it. Um, so I'm going to show those this morning um, to start with, and then we'll visit a couple of other plots um, for our, our regularly scheduled touring stuff. Um, so I'm not going to go really much into what's on this plot because uh, I think it was more or less um, an area for um, this builder to show some of the items that they got during a certain event, including the uh, Black Hole House. So since that's what we're focusing on this morning, that's what we're going to take a look at. Um, just for those that are wondering, this is Ductor's um, Ductor Who. Uh, he's we've gone through a lot of uh, their plots in the past: Ductor Evil, Ductor Frankenstein. Um, uh, I think they've got a Divago uh, or something somewhere. It's like all these Doctor uh, versions of stuff. But uh, this is like a, an alt plot that they just toss some things on. Um, but anyway, so this is what it looks like uh, when you get it. It's, it's a crater with like a, an animated weird looking uh, rope bridge leading to this almost like a weird disco ball kind of effect. Doesn't matter what angle you're looking at it, it always looks the same. Kind of creepy, it's like an eye that follows from a painting kind of thing. Got the crater down there that you can actually go down into. Uh, but again, a lot of the players that have this, they've like covered all this part up or boxed it in so that you only have access to this portal kind of uh, thing. And uh, go back around. And we'll pop into the house. Now, you'll notice that it's pretty much just black. I mean, you can't even hardly tell where I'm standing. There is, it appears to be like no floor. Um, it's what we call, I guess, a true black. Kind of like um, when you recolor the Arctera formations, they're naturally a, a bluish white here. Like part of it's transparent, part of it's opaque. Uh, and we saw someone that had recolored into the black and white version and it like really gave it a like a true black look. Well, that's the way this interior of this house behaves. Um, now you can see they put in some items. So you can see that you can actually place things, um, but it's so quirky in how the, the pitch blackness works. It just, it kind of throws you for a loop when you first come in, but usually it's just you know, just this. That's all you see when you come in. You got the door there and there's like absolutely nothing else. You're just in this vacuum of space kind of thing. Um, to go along with his uh, Dr. Hugh, um, he's got the little TARDIS here, um, just built with some uh, metal dividers and a travel poster, the lamp, of course. Now, um, from what I understand, you can change the uh, lighting settings, I think. I'm not positive on that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another um, black hole house plot um, where they've actually kind of recolored or, or made visible uh, the walls. So you can kind of get an idea of the shape of this weird um, prefab home. So this is what it looks like pretty much standard as you buy it as is minus these decorations that have been added. But um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty freaky. Again, it's, you know, going to have to use some clever imagination as to how you would incorporate that mechanic or whatever to make some kind of an observatory, I guess, or um, I've seen some that they've changed into some kind of weird, strange cave, uh, with, and it really brightened up and everything. So that was one version that's pretty much kind of like the, the regular, what it looks like. The other one 
if I get this spelt right. Looks like Artemi Uden. While we're waiting, good morning to those of you that are in the chat, including Bones. Um, I'm not sure if Poi will be here. Um, she's been gone for a few weeks um, taking care of her husband. They've been having some medical issues to deal with, and uh, I don't know if that's still ongoing. I think so from the last site I read, but um, thoughts with her and her loved ones on that. Um, but for those of you that can make it, uh, I appreciate you joining in. Even if you're just kind of a lurker and you don't chat, it's not a requirement, obviously. Um, but I do appreciate the, the silent support. So again, you can see that they've left the exterior pretty much the same. Um, but on the inside, uh, you can see how we actually see a floor now and the walls. And see how they're kind of twisted, like a little warped? And you'll see this even better if I look up. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's like a like a funnel type look to it or like a tornado shape. It gets progressively smaller, like a, an upside down funnel, I guess. And you can see how the walls just kind of twist. And that's the space you're given. Um, again, they were able to change, the, you know, the wallpapering and probably added some lighting and stuff. Brighten this up so you can actually see the the actual interior of the space. Uh, it's not all that big, um, but uh, it's still depending on your your intentions for the space and everything. Um, it can lend itself to some interesting builds. Um, I can't think right off the top of my head exactly what we saw in the ones before. I'm pretty sure we had one where it was like a AV kind of greenhouse thing and they had like a uh, like a tiered kind of thing. We had a room down here and then another room and then as it pres progressively went up they just raised the area with uh, weird stairs and stuff. So yeah, for, for the individual that uh, was asking about it on Twitter, I hope um, this proves helpful in making your decision as to whether or not you want to purchase it. If you were actually looking for some kind of um, large space, probably the biggest ones for prefab homes would be um, the Osun uh, house, which comes as a... a I think it's a signature reward or, or something like that. Uh, then there's the aviary house, I think is what it's called. Giant hoogle shape thing. Um, that one's pretty spacious inside. Uh, we haven't really visited too many of those that have used it. Um, and then probably the, the next biggest, to me personally, is, is the bunker house. That's probably the favorite. Um, the others, they have some space, but they're already, the the main rooms are pretty much segregated off. You know, the space is divvied up. The, the bunker house is just one big, you know, box. And uh, the hookah house is one big, it's not a box, but it's like a tube, uh, like a cylinder house kind of shape. Um, the only drawback for a lot of people on that one is because the walls are rounded, so some people have trouble working with those. But um, yeah, I hope this helps you make your decision as to whether or not you want to purchase it. Again, they do have that on the uh, summer sale, I guess. I really honestly haven't looked, but uh, let me see. Yeah, they got the sandcastle stuff, surf border. Um, that weird seashell fab kit thing that uh, we saw in a couple places, and I was like, where'd that come from? And that's part of it. Um, autumn leaves. I don't see the black hole house on here, but anyway, maybe it's a special thing that I don't see since I'm a free-to-play now. Anyway, um, it was requested, so um, hopefully this proves helpful to anyone that might be considering purchasing it or whatever.
Okay, so the first house we're going to go to today for the touring part of our show is um, a plot that's been on the list for quite a while. Um, I was hoping that maybe they would uh, sort out the interior, which is um, a bunker house, but as yet, I haven't seen any work on it. It's completely empty, but oh, this is the wrong one that I'm <laughs> to. Okay, well, forget about that one. This is the other one. Uh, this one is uh, by Bubbles, obviously, with the name lit up over here. Um, we visited several of their homes in the past. Usually they do a lot of, um, or they're one of those builders that does it on commission, or build it for somebody else. Now, so I don't know if that's the case with this one, if it's an actual different player and they commissioned Bubbles to build this particular plot for them. Um, but um, yeah, I thought it was kind of cute. Uh, I kind of liked it because um, a lot of the builders that do their own uh, prefab, uh, not prefab, custom houses, uh, is, including myself, we have a lot of trouble finding the materials that are just right for us. I kind of tend to pick an item that requires, like I use like thousands of the pieces and that ends up eating most of the decor count that's allotted for the exterior. And uh, it kind of, you know, pinches how much detail I can go into on the actual furnishings for the interior of the exterior, if that makes sense. Um, but this one utilizes some like oversized uh, building blocks and I think it's a good example for someone that's wanting to build a custom house with materials but like getting away with using as few pieces as possible to get some nice spaces out. Um, if you're wondering about how they did the name those are actually the detonators it's like the little like a little box with an antenna and a little light on top links. Now there's actually a light on the box itself too that a lot of people like to use for buttons for their control panels or uh, their uh, custom televisions or microwaves and stuff like that. But the little blinky light on the top is a big favorite for signs. We see that in a lot of like the uh, spaceports and stuff for like exit or like um, tunnel three or uh, I don't know what else, um, but uh, it's one of those weird, quirky things that as you're building the sign, placing these uh, little blinky lights one at a time, um, as you're putting it in, it will blink out of sync, um, and it kind of throws you for a little loopy if you're sitting there staring at it for long enough. Um, but when you leave or when you reload the house, um, they will blink in sync. Uh, it's just one of those things. So it's not like you can make it like a, a runway where it like blinks in a, a, a pattern. Um, I don't know if we have any item that works that way. Uh, some, they just blink intermittently in some weird rhythm. And then others will do like this. They'll sync up and they'll blink at the same time. So... It's not something that you can control that I'm aware of. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Katia has some kind of weird uh, add-on that might do something like that. But uh, in this case, that is not an uh, issue. And it, it looks better, I think, that they're all blinking together. But uh, again, for a sign like this and having to uh, create the shapes of the letters with these little individual little blocks, it's uh, a lot of the core items that had to be used up for that particular thing. But if you're intent on, you know, signing your work or um, for whatever reason, adding that, um, very effective. Uh, as for the land, um, you can see the white puff. So this is an upside down snowy hill that has been used to raise up the level of the ground because um, typically it's a landing pad that has a ramp coming down for those of you that, uh, you know, sometimes I think maybe some of my viewers forget about that because most of the plots we visit cover it. So they don't even remember that it actually has an actual ramp here. Um, and then there's combinations of the protostar insta hills, uh, like the ones that's, uh, they're more of a rounded shape. 
gives those rolling little hills like this one that has a little divot in the middle that they're utilizing as a pond space. Now the pond itself, I think, is one of the new uh, waterfalls. They just got it pushed down so you just see the top. And that's also where a lot of the lily pads and the little dragonflies that you see flittering around, um, that's where those come from. Some of the grasses as well. It's, it's a whole waterfall kit that you can get from the cash shop. Hey TW, good morning. Glad you could make it. Um, also notice the uh, critter here. This is actually a corpse of a gar, I believe. Um, I don't think there is an actual gar NPC as yet. Probably one of the few that haven't been added in. Um, at least I've not seen any um, animated versions yet. Uh, but you can see that the corpses, uh, people do find ways to use them. Um, they're pretty easy to get a hold of once you reach the areas where they drop regularly. So it's not a problem to acquire multiples. And you see they've used a few here. Um, here we have the little Draken shop and they're using that Moody Surgeon. Now this isn't the one that you get from that... Um, that uh, called the boss hunter thing. I think it's a different one. He actually like bounces around and I don't think he's a surgeon type. But you can see they've thrown in some little medical supplies to kind of make it look like witch doctor kind of thing. Um, these things, I don't remember what kit they come from, but I'm pretty sure it's a builder's kit that you can get. Um, it includes some other kind of beachy stuff, like a buoy and things, I think. Here's, I think this is the one that you could get from the boss challenge, dancing and I don't, I don't remember if he makes noise. I have my sound off, so I would imagine he probably does. Um, if it's like the lop ones that dance, they're really loud and making chirpy sounds and stuff. So, but uh, in here it's just stones and various shrooms and uh, some windy rivers, multiples of them to make this little pool um, with a waterfall coming out of the Taurine head statue. Now it looks like they've got the Tureen head statue and then one of the Tureen um, headdresses stuck inside it to kind of dress it up. There is actually a couple of um, Tureen statues that already come all decked out, but maybe they just wanted to make something different or they just didn't have a, um, a hold of those particular things. Now also they've added the frost skull to make this like third eye kind of have some mystical magical effect to it. Um, the this, this face of the skull obviously is turned to the back so you don't see that but the combination of items for this little statue here. Um, this particular item, the, the head statue itself, is a big fave for those that are into landscaping. If you flip it over um, and hide the face part of it, uh, it's got some nice um, textural elements to it with like the cracks and it's got some mossy green bits and uh, it's it's good for uh, you enlarge it and put it up it looks like you know some strange uh, mountainous areas uh, we've seen some build caves with it that kind of thing You can see there's just the cave they built out of the stones. And then uh, here you can see they've set it up so that it looks like it just the water just goes off into the horizon. Now it's kind of awkward because the honeycomb pattern lights up, but if I back off you can see a little better that they do have some waterfall uh, decor lined out along some of the edges to help kind of play into the idea that the water's actually 
uh, coming in with the tide, I guess, and making some splashes. Now, yeah, maybe the animation is going the opposite direction, but I think it still looks pretty, pretty nifty. Same way here. They've just got a miniature version of the waterfall to make it look like the, the bottle is bobbing. Even though the bottle's not really moving, I think it looks cute that they went through the detail of adding that extra little bit to make it look like it's affecting the water. Um, the shells and stuff, I want to say it's probably part of one of these um, sandcastle pieces. Um, but I know there's an underwater decor set that also comes with some shells and stuff, and I can't remember which one's offhand, but it might be part of that set and that these might be actual individual pieces, but I'm going to say it's me, one of these, just sunk down so you just see the part that they want to show. Um, as for the sandcastle bits, uh, you can see those have some interesting elements with the shells and the seaweed and the starfish and just the shapes themselves are all the little castle bits. Now this one, it makes it look like the water has come um, and destroyed some of it, causes to sink back down into the sand. Now, I don't know if this actually goes like this, or they've added something um, to it to make it have this animation. I kind of suspect the latter, but just looking at it, I couldn't tell you what items might be used for that particular bit. It's nice, though. It adds a little extra character to it. Yeah, these are currently available on the cash shop as a set for the summer stuff. It even has that gross little fish skeleton. Over here, we've got a little uh, floaty um, with the draken laying up on it. It's basically just one of the blue um, sleeping bags, recolored. That color shifting really comes in helpful. Um, for kind of changing things up a bit. <clears throat> uh, the colorful string lights, I believe those come from uh, the LOP, the core pack. It comes with like the Kurg and uh, some LOP NPCs, I think, and crates and, and a lot of these uh, colorful lights. I think. I could be wrong. There's been several kits that have come out that I haven't really taken a close look at, uh, but anyway. Um, lovely little huts here, great for beaches or um, like a little clubhouse kind of thing. It's basically just the tiki roofs um, with two by fours to build up the structure. Notice how they uh, managed to make it pretty good with uh, leaving space for the doors and for the window. Um, a lot of people, you know, they wish they could just line one board here and one board here and have it the same width and shape and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, having to resize it to make it fit the spaces that you need doesn't look too bad. You even have a little countertop here. Um, the surfboards, I believe, come from their own um, decor kit, but the beach balls, um, along with the beach towels and the uh, Barbie and the umbrella and such, um, those all come in the summer decor pack. I think there's three different versions depending on the type of towels you want. There's like the seaweed one. There's, I think it's like one with, um, yeah, like the fishies. And then there's one that has just stripes or something, something along those lines. I could see these, uh, this easily being uh, changed into like a little, uh, little bungalows, make it a personal residence, add some glass for the windows and stuff and make it like a little hut, beach huts or something instead of, you know, a little shop.
Over here is some of the beach towels that you can get, the seaweed version. Again, some more of the summer decor pack. There's the cooler and the umbrella. It also comes with, I think, some uh, cocktail drinks. It's got the little wedge of fruit and stuff on it. Let me go back this way. Little chair, <laughs> just sitting there. Um, again, I think these are part of a, a decor kit you can get. I have no idea what they're called. Your tiki lamps or something. I'm sure if someone wanted to fashion something along these lines, they could do like, they want to make it orange theme, they could use some Google statues. Use some of those haunted uh, spooky eyes and then add some kind of I've got lots of different fire items that could work. And make it some kind of a weird spiky crown. Here we come up on the main place. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no access to an interior or instanced area. I believe. Yeah, this little spot here, I think marks where the bunker house location would be. So I believe that's what they're using here, but they've put this Insta Hill on top of it. Um, because remember the Insta Hills and the upside down snowy hills and the upside down massive umbrella trees, the, the items that we're talking about, they all mirror the um, ground uh, remodel beneath them. So if you have a sandy plot, the sand is replicated. Um, and it can do some weird things like with the upside down snowy hill, if you have it flat and vertical, the texture of the grass will like stretch weirdly. Um, but if you lay it flat and just have it reflecting the surface or mirroring the surface or however you want to say it, um, it looks like normal ground, so it's great for those that want to do some strange landscaping to give some contour to the land. Um, but it also mimics any of the ground imperfections, if you want to call it that, anywhere um, patches of grass are or patches of dirt, that kind of thing. Now, it doesn't replicate the clutter that would be on the ground if that's what they have turned on, you know, the, the root, uh, weeds and stuff like that. But it does mirror the coloring and the texturing of the ground beneath it. And this little spot here is where the, the bunker house would normally be. But it obviously is down underneath and deep enough where even with me standing right over it or near it, it doesn't activate the door. So as far as I can tell, there's no access to an interior on this particular plot. There's nothing against that. There's no rule that says just because you have one doesn't mean you have to use it. Um, but I uh, just thought I'd mention it for those that might think that I missed it or something. <clears throat> Decorative totem crag stud rock. Oh, is it a Madam Faye item? See, I don't really do the Madam Faye stuff unless they get like freebie tokens, which is not very usual. Um, so yeah, that's that's good to know. I, I think those items change out pretty regularly, don't they? Um, so I don't know if they're actually available anymore or at the moment. I think they kind of like will throw in new stuff and then they'll rotate out the old stuff. I, I really 
don't remember how that system works, but yeah, thank you for that, TW. So as I was saying before, uh, a lot of us that do these custom built houses, um, there's like a variety of building blocks, not just the usual, like the floors and the uh, walls and, and uh, hover part pieces and stuff, but a lot of us will find you. Know, we've seen people use bookcases and um, uh, boxes and stuff to create their walls and stuff. Um, but this one's actually using uh, a lot of the curved walls and cylinders. And I think the cappers for the roofing are the um, metallic, um, I think it's the Marauder symbol or sigil, one of those. The one with like the Marauder face on it with the little weird skull face. Um, there's actually two versions. There's one, it's like a red and white and black kind of version. Uh, so it's just a little more colorful, and then there's the the copper version. Um, it's the newer of the two, and I think it's Red Moon related. Uh, so yeah, but you can see that they've managed to make three sections of this um, this house uh, using curved walls, curved glass, and still managed to fashion it in a way that it leaves gaps for doorways and such. Now you will notice that these rooms are rather large and open um, and uh, they opted to leave it pretty, I don't want to say empty, um, but you'll see what I'm talking about when we get into it. But um, some of these again, uh, Tiki Bits, I think this one is actually part of the Tiki Bar and they just pushed out just enough to show the mask. Um, but this one is from a, a different thing. Um, I suspect the same stuff that for these and the, the tiki stone bits. But the stairs, I presume, are either those solid cylinders or the domes. It's just the same piece sized down gradually and pushed in. So it's like a tiered staircase. A lot of people use it in that way. It's a really nice little elegant way of doing a staircase rather than your traditional just using stairs as is kind of thing. Um, you can see part of the gaps between the, the rooms or the building structure. Uh, they've used two by fours. There you can see some of that um, sigil again. There's that red moon. Um, and that's not the Red Moon. I don't remember what ceiling fan that is. But uh, it's kind of a newer item. But see what I mean by it's really open. There's not a, it's not overcrowded with the decoration and stuff, but it has a lot of space that could be, you know, maybe they could add some uh, bookcases here and a little, or a fireplace set up with some lounge chairs and couches and stuff. It has a lot of potential for um, additional things. You have a little under the stairs cupboard here. Apparently it's the bathroom. Um, the flooring or carpeting is the uh, tribal mat. Again, the flat version, which is here, and then the rolled version. Um, both come from the uh, Far Trader Our trader fab kit looks like a like an igloo kind of cavey thing um, with some lop fella stuffs. Um, for the tub, they've got the uh, tiki bar, and then they filled it with um, winding rivers. Um, one of the old version of the waterfalls. Uh, this, I believe, is a chimney. And then the Chua cups, the bottoms of them, um, just recolored to indicate the hot, cold faucets there. This whole little add-on here is uh, two by fours, including the stairs. This is a great way of getting the, the shape you want, but um, using the length so that it cuts into the, the wall and makes it smooth, a smooth transition. Um, some will try and actually do like a, 
uh, a uh, winding like spiral staircase kind of thing to get it to fit the curve. But I think this is a, a, an easier solution for those that, like me, are a little stunted in the area of imagination and creativity as far as making it look uh, uh, fancier. I prefer this myself. I think this looks nice and clean and it still curves with the, the thing, even though you're actually sticking the piece into the wall. As long as you can get away with that, I don't see no problem with it. I, I actually prefer this. Um, over here we have a uh, kitchen area. We have a little breakfast dining nook here. Again, it's the uh, tiki bars. They've covered the inside. It's usually some shelving kind of things in here, uh, but they've modified it with a curved wall and uh, cover part pieces to add in the seating and to hide the interior gapping there. Uh, the table, of course, is the free table. They've just sunk it down a little bit uh, further in so you don't see the whole uh, legging of the table. Over here, we've got a little, uh, I would presume a DJ station. Maybe this is where they come and have a little Party with the disco ball thing, a dance floor kind of thing. It's also got a nice view of the exterior outside. And over here is the main kitchen part. It's uh, mostly travel posters. It blends in nicely with the sink, kitchen sink, because they've overlaid another travel poster in front of the sink. Now they didn't do it on the end here, but that's something you add if you want. Um, I think itself is, I think it comes from the Boxing Gym Fab Kit. If you manage to complete the challenge, I never have. I, I can only get about halfway through it, uh, but yeah. That's the kitchen part. Foyer, I guess is foyer or whatever you call it. Um, here is more kind of like a living room space. Pretty standard on a lot of the furniture. Um, probably the most notable is this little coffee table kind of thing. We've got the nautical wheel, and I think it's the bottom of one of the wine bottles, the green one. Or it could be a beer glass that they recolored to a green, because um, I can't remember if the wine uh, bottle is actually as see-through as this is. I love the way they've utilized the little voodoo hoodoo head here as the fireplace using the mouth as that feature. Notice they didn't do like a lot of people, they'll add in the, the grating to kind of protect the fire and everything. This leaves it open, it still looks nice. It fits the theme of this being like a like a beach bungalow kind of uh, thing. So I think it works well. Um, the little rug here is basically just the door and landing pad that's been pushed down so you just see this uh, little bamboo-y looking rug. Then you have the little balcony porch thing. I, I tried Finding my way up on top here so that we could better see the construction of the building, but I couldn't jump my way up, so might have just done it poorly. Um, I think this is one of the Protostar um, balconies, but they just used the uh, railing part and they covered the rest with the landing 
staircase landings and then two by fours for the stair here. Now here they gave the little spiral staircase. It's done very nicely. Here's the Barbie from the summer decor pack. I can't remember if it actually comes with the smoke. Honestly, I don't know. If it doesn't, we have some smoke uh, bits that you can use for that. Now this part, this little patio thing, that's again the tiki bar. And then they've added decorations for the plants to kind of hide the fact that that's those end pieces there. And then cover the top with the exile floor to fill it in. You could go to the extent of adding, you know, chairs and um, we've seen a lot of people make uh, beach lounging chairs and stuff from all sorts of things from fence pieces like white picket fence stuff or uh, the decking pieces are a favorite. Um, even just the regular floors and stuff have been used. Anything kind of flat and squarish or rectangular um, could be. I mean, you could do travel posters even if, if you really wanted to get kind of funky with it. Um, but lounge chairs, or you could do some like um, tall tables uh, for people to order their drinks and then stand at the tables to chat with others um the little lighthouse thing i i don't remember the name of this antenna looking thing but then they put a, one of those uh protostar lamps on top protostar red moon one of the two I forget which one it is Uh, let's go. It's upstairs is all we have left. Um, the little railing here, that's one of the graded shelves. And again, they have access to a nice view of the beach down below. Uh, for the bed, they have um, tiki bars again, and then they're using a combination of the folded and the rolled version of the beach towels. Now, the, the flat version they had out on the beach for the, the Draken Girl to lay on. There's also the folded version and then the rolled version. And then here for the little closet. Again, it's the tiki bars. The two of four is on top and on bottom. And uh, then leaving the shelves open to utilize them as for clothing bits. And then again, the same tiki bar being used for the vanity table here. The chair appears to be a little shorter for that, but anyway. Um, and then a window for the mirror. Obviously, they could have added um, different bottles and files, especially with the color shifting. They could make it look all different, uh, pretty perfume bottles and stuff here. Um, we've seen some get carried away and, and make actual brushes and mirrors and combs and um, little spray bottles for perfume and, and all sorts of things that one would expect to find at a van kind of thing. But it, this is a good example of how they can use the same item multiple ways uh, to kind of make the furniture matchy. So there you go. I think, I think that's it. I like how they use the tiki lamps. They've hidden the, the fire part of it, but use that to look, make it look like structures. And again, keeping with that tiki back outside
Okay, I think that is it for this particular bill. I'm trying to see if I can speak up. Oh, apparently not. I think I might have gotten myself stuck. No, oh, we're good. I don't think those behave weirdly. They're hollow. So I can't like jump on the tree to get it because I'll just jump right through it. And the roof for this is too far away, but anyway, that's that's one house for today. Called Ting Town by Day Ting. Um, the next one we're going to visit is um, Deliwin Nuiled. I always thought it said Newlywed, but it's just the backwards spelling of the name of, of the first name. Uh, Newlywed. I think this is the one I was trying to talk about earlier where the the bunker house isn't being used, but I get my houses confused. I, I visit too many, honest. But um, yeah. So this um, here, you can see they still have the ramp visible, but they've done a good job of kind of crowding it in and you know, not necessarily blending it in with the environment here. Um, but not making it stand out so much. Um, they did a nice job of crowding in um, a lot of different um, grasses and trees uh, and stones. Get a nice view of this um, waterfall here. I think that's a, a weapon gun kind of deter to deter visitors. And down here, of course, um, they're also using waterfalls for the little pondy area here. Of course, the lily pads again, a lot of the grasses, and probably if you see any of those little dragonfly things, what that's from. Yeah. Uh, for this long uh, staircase, it's just uh, decking stairs, I believe. And then they've got, um, I think it's the Orin version of the pillars to uh, either Orin or Exile, it's one of the two, for the supports. Kind of make it look a little more solid than just a floating pair of stairs up here. I'm going to go down below first so you can kind of get a look at the landscaping that they've done. You can see that they didn't, um, a lot of the players like to hide or, or build up um, the plot to, to um, disguise that it's actually a floating block of land. They cover up uh, all the machinery and the edges. But this one's actually left it pretty, pretty open and visible, which is, you know, A-OK. -okay. It just shows that you don't have to go to that extent to, to make it interesting. But you can see they've left the clutter on. So you see all these extra little weedy grasses. Um, again, that's, that's a choice of the builder, but as you can see, you lose that clutter when you add in um, your own contour for the ground. 
Um, this is one of the protostar instahills. It mimics the coloring of the grasses, but it doesn't add the clutter to it. Um, the only way you can um, remedy that so it's not such a stark difference between cluttered and uncluttered ground is either leave the clutter off, which a lot of the builders do opt to do, and then add your own clutter in. Or if you leave the clutter on, a lot of them will add grasses and stuff to kind of try and blend it in. It won't look quite the same um, because obviously these actually have movement to them. Like when you walk through them or when the wind blows, you can see how they have a little bit of movement. Um, if you plant um, like some of the grass patches, I don't think those move. I think they're stationary. Now there are some plants that do have movement like these. But it, it again still looks different than this. So, and we don't have little clumps of this particular grass from what I recall. So it's not like you could just fake it in by planting your own that looks like this. Um, that would be something that uh, Wildstar could um, consider adding some patches of clutter um, that we can use to kind of blend in these hills and. Uh, other raised areas and have them just be little patches of this. Like, like say they could make one like this right here and then you can just replicate it and you know, get as many as you want and patch it over and make it blend in with that. Okay, so um, let me get back, back onto the main path here. I uh, do want to point this out. That's, this is that um, infused habanero bloom. I think uh, the week before last, one of the last places we visited had this particular plant. The roots are actually uh, stuck into the ground. They actually fan out pretty wide, um, the root system. Uh, this is the, the one that a lot of people, or I say a lot, there's a number of builders that have utilized this particular plant as kind of a water uh, feature um, for like their cave systems and stuff. Uh, you have to turn it upside down to get the water to be flowing the right direction. Um, we've seen some not even bother with that particular notion. They just have like the coloring and that it moves. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd throw that because usually we only see part of it. And that's like the whole thing mostly. And get back over here. Yeah, I think the other place I was thinking of is, is another one that I'd like to visit and I didn't. So ignore what I said earlier. <laughs> this one actually has a, a built in. Um, little place. Uh, I think this is supposed to be like reminiscent of, um, oh, what's that thing? Jurassic Park, I think, where they have the pins with the critters. I um, forget what they're called. Velociraptors or something. That's what I think they're, they're supposed to mimic. Um, so these are like viewing windows. There's one on the other side as well. Um, but this is uh, again, it's that one big square space and they've divvied up into like an upper and lower area. I like how they've got the barbed fencing kind of leaning in. Again, it's supposed to be a protective thing to keep the critters from trying to get out. But then they've got this open <laughs> area here. I know they've got the weaponized uh, welder here to try and fend them off, but it looks kind of dangerous to have this open. Um, anyway, uh, you can see to add some vines, not only do they have some of the, I think it's one of the either the mossy trees, um, but they could have used like the overgrowth. A lot of them have some viney bits, um, but they've also got the, um, I think it's called the leafy stalks. A lot of people like to use it for um, seaweed in their underwater uh, builds or inside aquariums and stuff. Um, it has a nice movement. Again, if you're doing the aquariums and you want to kind of fake in that there's water, um, find use plants and stuff that have movement and it kind of gives that illusion. 
but anyway, um, you can see they filled it in with lots of different grasses and stuff, and then used some of these new uh, Ravenock, their version of the Velociraptor kind of thing. Uh, they snuck in some of the bones that you get from Arctera, I think. Um, they've got the corpses snuck in here uh, for the little egg pile. Um, it's just the spider eggs. Uh, I think there's like three different versions. Um, well, actually probably four because I think there's an augmented version as well. It's got the green wires coming out of it. Lots of different little creepy plants. Not all of them from, you know. And then to get the grass, the grassy part, that's just the floor. I think it's uh, one of the green wood floors. And then they've just added in patches of grass and then the water as well. Some winding river, I think, with the old waterfalls coming down. Up above the ceiling, again, I think it's just one of the Orn versions or something that has that uh, like viney shapes to it. And of course, on this side, you have the other viewing window. This interior, technical interior. All right, Bones, you have a good day at work. Thank you for dropping by. We'll see you next week, maybe. Um, as for the cloud, gaseous cloud, I believe that's one of the smoke effects that you can get from one of the smoke decor packs. Now, there are some items that you can readily get, like um, I think there's a little puffer uh, shroom, but it's kind of like intermittent. It's not as uh, lingering as this is. Um, but a lot of people like use this one, and there's another one I think that's for city builds. They use it for like smog, or, like size it up really big, and it'll be like gaseous, stinky stuff. Um, they also like to use it for um, piles of garbage or um, poo. Um, another one that's big fave for that one in particular is uh, the smoky tendril from the um, toxic barrels. Well, before we got those, I think a lot of them used bubbling cauldrons and stuff. The problem with the cauldrons and stuff and I think maybe even the toxic barrels they had the bubbling noise. Um, and so a lot of people didn't want the sound effect for that. Same way uh, for those that use like the waterfalls for um, faucets in their sinks, you know, in the kitchens and bathrooms and stuff. It comes with the sound effect of this raging waterfall that so kind of throws it off a little bit. But um, yeah, I'll just thought I'd mention it. I guess I could have just went on the stones here. Uh, I think that's a uh, well, Shades Eve decor item. It's called the Poison Spore Tree. I think there's a bush version and a tree version. Anyway, there's a little camp over on the side here. Using thorny log piles as like seat. A lot of people like to use this log because it is hollow and you can walk right through it. 
is fun for those that have foreign-y themed or jungle themed um, plots and they're looking for like um, natural tunnels and stuff like that. I don't think I want to get down and going up here just getting the house part, but you can see they've got several little uh, water features placed in. Now I think some of this uh, smoky bit, I think that's from the newer version of the waterfalls. Now if you're using the older version, we have found ways to kind of mimic that um, using a combination of um, blue flares um, there's the uh, frost skull, it gives off some weird sparkly bits. There's the boy of the crystal, it gives off sparkly bits and um, kind of a mist effect. Um, there's the uh, medical cots, turn them upside down and they have that um, kind of like hover, hovering mechanism and it's got the blue glowy and a lot of people like to use that for kind of making it look like this where the water is moving. Is that is it, it undulates the the animation, um, so it makes it kind of look the water is kind of going. Yeah, so we're back at the front. Let me just. So we went down first. Let's go up this time. Now you'll notice that uh, most of the trees here, I think, are uh, at least the bigger ones are the mangrove ones. So we're looking at the roots and the tree part, like being the canopy. But they've added in the bowls to make it look like those, um, what are they called? Elf shelves or something? Um, mushroom bits that stuck onto the tree. They've added those in. Um, some people like to use them in their uh, builds as like stepping stones for like hidden areas in their treetops. Um, I personally hate those because I'm really awful at jumping. Um, so when I first saw these, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna have to jump. But no, they're just using them as like part of the decoration of the tree, thankfully. They've got staircases everywhere, which is great for me. But uh, here we come upon the house itself. Now, uh, a lot of it is um, exile floors, um, archways, you've got uh, two by fours, there's decking pieces for not only the stairs, but also the railings and stuff. Out here we have a medical table being used as a ping pong table. Uh, I think it's a two by four that's just showing just the edge to make the line down the middle here. And then for the netting, it's the um, braided shelf. It's starting to get dry again. This is why I continue not to do my double day streaming. Unfortunately, I'm still susceptible to the the coughing and stuff. Anyway, um, and very simple. Uh, some will go through the trouble of making the paddles. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the items that they've used in the past for that. Um, or in windows, like especially like the orange one, um, that's kind of on the flatter side and not kind of got those, like the, the pink one has that little divot on the side. Um, it kind of throws the shape off, but like you could use that. You could probably use um, uh, the Marauder uh, uh, sigil that they were using for the roof of that other house as a flat round, and then just put like you know um, two by four or something as the handle. I don't think what else a plate probably work um, with a, a two by four on there as a handle um, or a, one of the spoons or a fork or knife or something something that could be hidden inside the little paddle part um, work as the handle 
anyway, that's the little porch here, or balcony, or terrace, whatever you want to call it. Um, the door itself is um, just glass. Uh, again, it's several pieces of glass. I think it's three all together. Uh, one here, uh, one here, and then another one for the middle. And that's why on the middle part, um, it's a little more frosted because there's actually like two layers of glass. Got the two layers from the two joining here and then the two layers here. So I'm um, using uh, a pillar for the handle. Got the little entryway uh, thing for the coat rack and such. Um, for the shelf here, it's just two benches sandwiched together. And I want to say, yeah, I think these are supposed to be shoes or boots. It's a cylinder, a solid one with a dome or like the little foot part. And uh, then for the little uh, handles for the hangers, um, it's hammers, I think. And of course, the graded shelf again. That. Um, for the for couch, it's basically just a regular wooden bench. Um, and then they've tossed on the horn pillows for decoration. Again, you know, a lot of this customizing, you don't have to get like super elaborate every time. Sometimes it's just as simple as, you know, sticking on a pillow, cover up something. And you could use a plate or um, maybe that that or in landing and make it look like a doily underneath the the base kind of thing like that. Um, this again, this little pattern for the window, it's again just framed glass, and again it's three pieces: it's one big one for the main, and then a second one, and then a third one. And that's why as you get closer to the middle, because there's multiple layers, it's more frosted the other way. And you get some fun patterns when you do that. Um, most of us, I think, tend to use the framed glass because it almost gives kind of like a stained glass pattern to it or style. Uh, but you can use unframed glass as well for some of it to avoid having the lines all in the This little display case for the boy in blue crystal that's just a dome cylinder same thing they're using for the boots and then uh curved glass there so in this room here this is the bathroom um, they've done a washer here uh, it's basically just orin floors and uh, archways. For the buttons, it's one of the Christmas lights. They just sunk it down just enough where you see just a few. That's why the buttons are kind of like some of them are closer and poking out further. And then for the clothes, or maybe this is drier, I can't tell. Um, for the clothes, it's just various pillows. Um, I've seen some uh, actually add in a, a layer of unframed glass to make it look like um, they'll like have one flat against the, the window part and then another one uh, like this angle but lower down again unframed and it makes it look like there's a water level inside there I've done that myself got a cabin kind of thing that's got a washer and dryer set um, the toilet uh, there's any number of pieces here. This is um, using the cross blocks. Um, there's the archway and the domes, I think. Not the domes. I forget what it's called. But there's like a square and then the little uh, wedgie piece and then the little the hooky piece. <laughs> I don't remember the names of them, but it's it's a pretty nice toilet. Again, it's probably one of those things that 
a lot of people don't think about there is the one um, that the game has itself the flushomatic 5000 or something but it's it just doesn't suit every themed house that's out there so most of us tend to build our own and this is the, a really good clever example um, I think they're using a an orange dome for the interior of the bowl to make it hollow like that and again they're using um, one of the tubes the curved tubes for the piping for the plumbing um, but the rest of it is all the snow blocks Um, if you really wanted a lid, obviously they couldn't make a snow block version because they're too thick, but um, a lot of people like to use like the um, the plates. Um, I've seen some use the Orin windows um, and some just like keep it covered like with the lid is down so they can get away with not having to build in this whole little bowl feature. Um, for the toilet paper holders, uh, this one's just the water trough. And then this one here is, uh, I think they're making it look like um, the little pole version, uh, but rather than actually using the pole, they're just making it look like there's a pole. They just topped it with um, one of the short cylinders. So because the toilet paper is there, you can't see the rest of it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but if you wanted a full on pole, you can just use a pillar and get away with it that way. Um, for the cabinets here, the sinks or whatever, um, that's the ornate chest, the one that people like to use for bank vaults um, and things like that because of this handle part. Um, then you've got the domes. I think it's two versions, the solid and the hollow one. The hollow one raised up a little bit to make it look like an actual sink. Then they've got the tubing and the waterfalls coming in. I think the drains are just smaller versions of either domes or cylinders push down to make it look like a little drain. If you want an actual drain, the Red Moon vent works really well. There's also a couple of chimney pieces I think that some have used. Um, for this little bit, that's the uh, gear lamp, I think is what it's called. I don't think it actually gives off any light, but it's a nice little addition. And then using framed glass for the mirrors. Um, pillars for the towel racks. Uh, for this shower slash hub thing, um, cover part piece for the interior, you can see the brown part here with the little slash marks. Uh, two by fours for the little bench inside. Um, Cassian uh, floors for the outer, granite floor. That's the one that's got two different textures depending on what side you use. One has like four stone squares and then the other side has this weird little tiled pattern on it. Um, and then of course framed glass. Uh, a dome for the spout up here, waterfall, and then um, the smoke I believe is one of the smoke uh, fillers from the actual smoke pack. Um, the reason I say that, that I'm pretty sure that's what it is, is because the smoke seems pretty consistent in how it's floating up and relatively straight. Um, those of us that you have used the uh, blue flare, it also has a smoke trail that's like this, but it's it moves and it, sometimes it weakens and then it gets really thick and puffy so it's kind of intermittent on how it behaves um, and of course I think the coloring is a little different this looks more white um, the blue flare is a little bit more well, bluish uh, but um, again it depends on what you can afford or get a hold of this one comes from the cash shop the blue flare is just a world drop I think um, and, and common enough that you didn't have too much trouble getting a hold of one. Okay, so that's the bathroom. Pull, pull up. 
here we have the bedroom area. It's got a number of different styles of beds. Some are come as is, like the Orin bed and the regular, um, I don't know if it's called exile bed, but just wooden bed maybe. Um, even a sleeping bag for visitor, I guess. Then you have this lovely little bed. I think this is adorable. This could work in like a little um, cottage, couple's cottage, you know, a little getaway kind of thing, um, or jazzed up a little differently. It could you know, be like a princess bed for um, some kind of mansion place. It's just uh, two by fours, pillars, um, the drapes, of course, and the flat and rolled version of the uh, Tribal mats with the mattress, and then of course the pillows. But how how lovely is that design there? I like this design. Looks very cute. Again, you could dress it up any way you want. Use different style pillars. Um, add some vines and and flowers. It could be orany themed, or go with like uh, stones you know, stacked hoogles or, or just rocks and stuff to make it more granite version. Um, add lots of bones and horns and things like that. And it'd be very conversion, but you could still keep a certain pattern and just jazz it a little different. And it's very uh, customizable in, in the, the way that you can use different materials for the, the blankets and, and the pillows and such. So yeah like that a lot. And then of course, and get over here, they've added in, extended the headboard to make these little shelves for the little nightstands on either side. Oops, I almost fell down. And then up here is the little library reading area. Again, it's the same bookshelf over and over. The one with like the acorn um, hoppers. Uh, and it just depends on what the builder is going for as far as if they want to. You know, we've seen some where it's just the shelves, multiple, you know, back to back, side to side, however you want to say it. Um, but others will box it in as this one is done. And this one I like is because they've uh, boxed it in or in it somewhat unique way. I think we might have seen it once or twice before, but they're using the archways to make it more of a rounded access um, to these, um, where most of the time I think people will just do use the, the two by fours, some other building material to just box it in, to make it a little more clean as far as keeping the shape of the, the bookcase covered up so that they just have the books. This would be good for like, um, this almost reminds me, I think it's just the shape, but it looks nautical to me. It'd be good like in a, a ship, has that, that shape for the doors and stuff. Kind of mimic that around. Um, for the little flower pot here, that's just two domes end to end, or butt to butt, however you want to say it. On to the next room is a kitchen. A lovely little dining table here, two by fours. Um, Draken floors to make this little table runner. And then um, the posts for the table have just been extended up to make the little candle holders, which I thought was a, a cute idea. Over here, you have the little raised, I don't know what that's called, a dais or whatever. Um, it's just the uh, decking pieces, the corner piece, I think it is. And then they've got some triangle pieces and floor pieces of the Orin version. Just kind of 
fill in a little bit of a design. And then they're using a similar thing that they used for the play case um, that we saw previously, but instead it's um, the fireplace. It's the uh, cylinders, curved glass, cylinder, and then the campfire. Got like a hollow cylinder here and then a solid one from below. Um, here, uh, you can see they're using some oversized pillars. And then for all of the cabinetry here in the kitchen, um, I think it's mostly the, the really thick um, metal edged two by four or block kind of things. Um, notice they didn't um, make the top part into actual cabinets. That, now that could have easily been done. They've taken the time to make the shelves down here or the drawers, um, but they didn't make cabinetry here. But if you wanted to, that could be done with like the ends of maybe crates um, or other floor type doors or just multiples of these, you know, like put like four or five of them together to make a, a, a paneled a door and then add another little handle and it would be matchy matchy to what's going on down here. Um, that might be why they left it off because they couldn't find something that matched the material as well as the, the drawers, but just a, a choice. Um, and it's one of those you don't have to do that, but I think this is a fun way. It's using minimal pieces, but it's thick and it's um, uh, nice texture and color, the brown, the wood. They've just decided to use the upper part as more like shelving. Uh, two by fours, of course, align the top of this little bar area. Now, I'm not positive what this is supposed to be. I don't know if that's like um, a container that's been knocked over, like a salt shaker or something. Um, this looks like a mixing bowl, perhaps, uh, or maybe like a fruit bowl of their own making. It's just a couple of domes, uh, probably a solid one and then a hollow one here. Um, this one's same, it's cylinders and a dome popped there. Um, the drawers for all of this is pillars, and then uh, notice not all of them have handles, but I think these are um, uh, bottle bottoms or glass bottoms for the handles. For the oven, um, or maybe it's the dishwasher, I think this might be the dishwasher and that's the oven over there. Um, it's the flat metal table. Um, the little Marauder display for the control panel here. Come on, move out of the way. Um, pillar for the handle. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is bottle bottoms or tops for the buttons here. Uh, the lighting. Uh, notice how this is actually lit up and this area kind of is. I don't think these Marauder lights actually give off any light. I think what it is, is you're seeing what's left over from the orange sconces that are above. That's the lighting you see here. Now, if you don't use the sconces like this, you could shrink them down and sink them underneath and behind this. Um, I've done that for a lot of lighting that you like to look at the lighting, but they don't give off either any lighting or not enough. Uh, and you can kind of fake it in that way. Again, the sink comes from that cab kit deal. And I think this is the flat metal table again. For the cutting board, or just, just one of the floors. Um, notice the little, I think this is one of those um, bread boxes, the one where like you push up the handle and it goes to the side and then inside you have the bread. I've seen a few that they actually have it open and you see the loaf of bread, but here they just left one slice out. Um, but it's just domes 
and then either a cylinder. If you're going to have it open, you would use one of the curved walls instead, and then um, a pillar for the handle on that. For the stove top and the actual stove, I believe it's Orin floors. Um, the graded floor panel, um, the one, if you flip it over, it's just kind of like a blackish gray uh, uh, backside. I like to use it for sidewalks and stuff. Um, again, I think they've inset a light inside the exhaust here, and it's basically just a dome and a cylinder. Um, here, I think, is a, the back side of a travel poster, and then using the pillar again for the handle. For the little food cloche, it's just a plate, a dome, and then a bottle top or a wine bottle top for the little handle on, on the tippy top there. Um, Chopin lockers for the fridges. Straightforward there. For the island, again, it's one of the blocks that they're using for the cabinetry. They just stuck it out here for the platters. It's again the flat metal tables. And also, I guess we take notice of the lovely um, aquarium. Now this one's gotten pretty fancy. Uh, pillars, um, two by fours, the tiki roof, and then for the water effect they're using the waterfall, either the top or the base, base of it. Um, they've added in um, like the overgrowth, and um, some grass patches to add in some greenery to make it look kind of mossy and stuff. Again, they're using plants that move, like the um, space wheat. Now, usually the space wheat, it's actually got that bulby green, uh, bluish, um, like rounded mushroom looking thing on the bottom. They just pushed it down so you don't see that part, you just see the wheat grass or space itself. Um, they've also got um, the barnacle weed. That's the one where you can flip it upside down. It has that weird little whirly pattern, and I think it looks like chocolate. Um, the uh, leafy stalks for the seaweed, and of course they got that uh, Shades Eve uh, poisonous spore tree as well. Um, I think this is one of the corpses of like that walrus type creature. I don't remember the name of it. Um, but there are some plushies you can use. There's the sunfish, there's the shellark, um, there's the gar plushies if you're looking for some aquatic type critters. But um, the uh, theme glider also works for a nice little fancy fish. Um, if you're looking for jellyfish, the alien tentacle plant thingy works really well. You just turn it upside down and it looks just like a jellyfish kind of thing. Um, we've also seen uh, several builders um, fashion their own fish from pillows, um, plates, and medical kits and things like that. They've come up with some really cute ideas to make their own like little schools of fish and stuff. Uh, if you're looking for coral type things, um, the uh, purple rock arch is good. It's a fave. Um, probably some of the terminite items would work well because it's got some nice texturing to it. And even if it's like a purple color now, you could probably um, modify it with the color shifting to make it look a little different. Um, there are, of course, the items that come from the uh, underwater um, decor kit that include, I think, some, some uh, shells and uh, coral bits and uh, other kinds of watery plants um, that you might not see otherwise. But I'm trying to name some things that you know you don't typically associate with water and aquariums, but that would work well for it. Um, and then you've got the frost spore here. 
kind of looks like a sluggy snail kind of thing sticking to the wall there. Um, that's the one where if you flip it upside down, it's got that blue, it's opaque, um, but it kind of moves. So the bigger you make it, the more you see the movement. So it looks like water that's rising and falling. Um, we've seen a few people use that for water features if they're not hard pressed to have, you know, clear water. Uh, but you can see this works pretty well. It does kind of um, subdue the colors and such uh, because it is kind of like looking through frosted glass almost. But uh, a nice use of that particular item, the, the waterfall. Uh, I think that's it for up here. Go down below. And then you have like a little office space. But you can see the area, the, the water area below. I thought this was a cute little addition to this particular house. I mean, it's almost pure glass for the walls of this particular room. You get a full 360 view of, or mostly, uh, of the space around you. It almost like like you're just kind of hanging in midair. Go back down a bit. I didn't show it earlier because I didn't want to spoil the. The look of it, but uh, this way. Yeah, it's up there. There is an actual way to get up there. I remember how oh, I did it before. Yeah, this is what you see from the little office bottom of the house. There. There's a little campground that we saw earlier. Of course, they've done a fun job of with the, the waterfalls and, and getting the rocks to that out just so. Again, um, for those that already had water features that they had used the old waterfalls for and then tried to incorporate the new ones into it, they, I think they found it problematic um, because obviously the water uh, is positioned differently. You know, if, has this gap, then you had to put in some extra rocks or change the rock formation to better suit the new waterfalls and their shape. Um, so most found it easier just to leave the old ones in place and then if they wanted any new water features, to use the new ones um, so that they could start fresh. Because uh, I know several that upgraded to the newer ones and had to spend a lot of time renovating the, the stones that they were using for the, the build in order to operate it more smoothly. So there you go. Um, two very lovely little homes. Just to give you some ideas of different approaches to um, the builds. Again, even if you might not decide to take on the themes that these ooh, I almost fell off um, that these particular houses incorporate, you could get away with you know using some of the elements, maybe some of the furniture or how they treated the windows um, or things like this, like the little game table here. How simple and easy is that to add into you know uh, an arcade room or um, you know somebody's den or a clubhouse or a guild house or however you want to but lots of little elements that can be used for inspiration and in, in, uh, putting together some some nifty things for your own house even if you don't take a 
inspiration from all of it, just a small piece um, would work great. Like this little potted plant kind of arrangement used in the water trough and then just tossing in a lot of different flowers. I still think this would make a great baby bed. Add a little mobile up top or something, a little baby bed, like one that, you know, would rock or something. Anyway, um, that's it for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, um, remember to check out the events that are upcoming for this month. They have a post in the forum called Starcom Station Wire, and it's marked for the month of July, and you can see all of the events incoming. In fact, there's a new one. Um, it's a player-driven one, uh, something called the MMO Book Club. Uh, apparently, they take a vote every month from their members and uh, pick a game for all of them to meet up in. And I guess Wildstar was picked for the month of July. So if you see an influx of new players, that would be why. So I hope um, if you them that you extend them uh, a warm welcome. And maybe, uh, never know, maybe they'll decide, or at least some of them will decide to kind of stick around, um, which would, you know, be a plus for us. But um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of uh, different things. They have a like community spotlight um, and they also go over uh, in-game events and store updates and stuff when those will be hitting um, for this month. So be sure and check it out. They do that every month. Um, it's usually pretty quick when they post it. So um, you can know ahead of time when to expect certain things rather than wondering and waiting for the, the tweet or whatever. So yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed that. And I just realized I forgot to put my tweet out, so that was my bad. I think I'd done that the other week, too. Um, but, yeah, uh, appreciate you guys uh, sticking with me. And um, we should be back next week on Entity Side. So uh, join us again if you can. Um, if you can't, there's always the videos on YouTube that you can catch up on any episodes that you miss. And uh, in the meantime, good luck with your projects. Have a wonderful summer time for you guys that are enjoying patience and stuff. And um, see you guys later. Bye-bye.